I feel like I'm gonna have to wash these brushes immediately because I don't know what I'm doing with the cream yet. Oh, 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 what did I do? Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to an impromptu filming today. It is actually way later in the day than I normally film, but I have been getting a lot of things for my new beauty room slowly coming in because I did a little shopping on Amazon Prime Day and stuff is slowly coming in. I'm still waiting for things, but that's why there's no plant here. There's no tree uh, chair actually pulled over here because I have so many things back here right now that is going to be part of the beauty room. I'm going to have a background soon, sort of. And I'm actually working on a lighting situation, although I'm not sure if it's coming through because natural light always works the best for filming. Not that anybody really cares because I know you're probably like, hey, girl, you said boxy charm in your title. Get to the video. But right now I am testing two lights. I'm trying to decide if I need to turn on the ring light too. I almost feel like my normal lighting is actually better than this and I've already done some tests, but we're going to just play with it a little bit. We are going to see, especially since it's a little later in the day anyway. So yes, 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 yes. This is a BoxyCharm and Chic Beauty Box video because their shipment for May, June went to my tiny house. It kind of got lost in translation. So this is very old and delayed, but it does have some makeup in here that I thought was worth going through with you. And we can get a little chatty in here as well. I think I am going to turn on my ring light really quick just to see, but that means I have to unplug something. Hold on. The behind the scenes is still kind of wild because I am going to be having a separate office from my beauty space, but you know, things take time to evolve. I don't have a second desk yet to go into the office. So I've kind of got multiple laptops in this room. And I honestly feel like for some reason, all of the new fancy lighting makes it actually look darker in here on camera than it does with natural light. And I just don't know if this is gonna work. I may be returning things from Amazon. And you know, it's like when you get something from Amazon Prime and you're like so excited and you're like, man, maybe maybe this was a, maybe I need a refund. So if the lighting changes throughout, I may just be, you know, doing a little in the wild testing with you guys. But yes, we are going to be doing my paid for BoxyCharm box for the month of July and an older May, June chic beauty box because looks like there's some decent makeup in here I wanna tell you about, I wanna try. One thing I'll be honest, I've already tried and it's a high-end brand, high-end brand. Celebrity, a celebrity's endorsed brand, it's their brand and I'm not loving it, I'm not loving it. I got one from Boxy, I got one from Chic now. It's corroborated, let's talk about it. Grab your tea, grab your snack, grab your water, get comfy, and let's get ready to put some makeup on this um, very zitty face today. <laughs> Cheers. If you missed my PR box with BoxyCharm, I will go ahead and link that above. That box was pretty okay, and I knew that my pay for box would be different, and I honestly can't remember what I got, so let's jump back into the July base box with BoxyCharm, but this time, it's what I paid for and what I chose. Oh yeah, and this is what I chose. I chose the Alley Oop Stack the Odds 3-in-1 Stackable Compact with a cream blush, bronzer, and highlighter for $38. It is cruelty free, it is vegan, it is paraben free, all of the things, and I've seen a lot of people loving these types of products. It looks pretty cute, and the shade range I got was called Sun Kiss already sliding around on me here. Woo! So let's see, how does this work? I've not opened this at all. So we've got the blush in the middle. Oh, here we go. The bronzer. Okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. And then up here should be the highlighter. Does this slide? I'm putting my finger in the blush. I'm getting it everywhere. How does it? Oh, you got to flip it up. I thought that was going to slide around as well. Little confusing component, but it's got a tiny mirror up here. And these, you know, for really nice for travel, throwing it in your bag, whatever you got to do. So that'll be interesting to play with. It is cream though. And y'all know I am a powder lover because I have oily skin. And sometimes the techniques you use with cream products have to be different than what you use with a uh, powder. So we'll see how this goes for me today. Could be an epic fail, could be fantastic, could be a new holy grail, or I could want to declutter it. We're going to find out together. And oh, okay. 
So I did get these in my PR box, but I'm honestly happy to get another one because this is the Eloise Luxury Eyeshadow Brush Set and I love the handles. And like I said, behind the scenes right now, things are a little crazy back here, so it's a mess, but this is what they look like. Super pretty. Really soft brush, brush bristles. I do like them a lot. And they're a $22 value, and I do think they're probably worth that. With four of these in here, I think it's worth that. This is a good price. Speaking from experience now that I've had them for a while. And then I also got another, and I'm not mad about it, Kate Somerville Goat's Milk Moisturizing Cream for $76. Cha-ching, cha-ching. I am still using the one that I received. I like it so far. I don't think that's what broke me out up here, but I'm still kind of figuring it out because I have new breakouts over here. I told you guys recently, I've been doing some struggling with my skin since I was sick for so long. So still playing that by ear. And I'm pretty sure I already got this in a different box. This is looking like a repeat to me. This is the Saturday Skin UZ Vitamin C Eye Bright Cream for 32 bucks. I don't think Saturday Skin is cruelty free though, which is why I was like, oh wait, have I tried this? No, I don't think I have because it's not a brand that I can use, I believe. Let me double check. Is Saturday Skin cruelty free? According to Cruelty Free Kitty, Saturday Skin has confirmed that it is truly cruelty free. They don't test finished products or ingredients on animals. Yay, okay. Then maybe I have tried them. Maybe I'm getting it confused with something else. Either way, Okay, glad to have it. And it is a little bit smaller and it's skincare. So unfortunately it's not something I'm probably gonna be trying today because you wouldn't see anything anyways and I'm already sensitive skinned right now. But this is pretty small, but it's apparently, you know, a very good product. Let's see how much it is. Oh, it's 32 bucks. For this little thing, 32 bucks? Hmm. Okay, 32 bucks for this tiny little muffin here. I wanna just focus mostly on makeup today cause I'm already kind of doing some stuff behind the scenes here. So the last thing in my paid for box before I move over to the Chic Beauty box is something from the Beauty Crop. This is the Liquid Eyeshadow Duo for 18 bucks. It's a dual ended long wearing liquid eyeshadow. And it is cruelty free. It's Cinnamon and Fudge is the shade names here. So, well, this will be interesting because I do have more eyeshadows to tell you about and I'm not sure I'm in love with them. That's everything in my paid for box, but let's do a quick little add up of how much everything is. This is $186 value. Now, since this does have some repeats from my PR box, there's some things in here that I was like, oh, okay, but I'm not mad about them because I really, really liked these brushes. I thought they were super soft, performed really well in the last video. And I'm definitely not mad about getting another Kate Somerville product. This is a $76 value, but I love her products. They do really well for my skin. And I mentioned her goat's milk line has also been fantastic for me. So really loving that, really am. So I'm not too sure how I'm gonna feel about something like this. This isn't generally how I like to do my eyeshadow, but let's be serious. The thing that I picked is gonna be the thing that I'm really gonna be testing because I am a powder girl not a cream girl. However, the choices weren't that great, unfortunately. So I, of course I picked something that was makeup. So let's try the Alley U Cream Face Set and see how this does today, shall we? Now, I'm also gonna be putting on some things that I got from the Chic Beauty box. Now again, this is from the May June box and they do have options. So there's a lot of things in here that I did not get that I wish I would have that are high end. Like there's a Kevin Aquan Neo highlighter. I remember when these are going around a long time ago, I'd still love to try one. I already received the James Charles palette, which was a little controversial for them. So tell me what you think about that, but it is a big palette for, you know, a lot of value. And there are some NARS eyeshadow duos going around. So let's, let's just get into what I did get. This is the thing I'm gonna tell you, I've already done a spoiler. I have already tried this yesterday and I don't think I love this celebrity's brand. And I've tried a couple of her things now and I like her, it's not about her. I think it's just these aren't my favorite formulas. So this is the Rare Beauty True to My she uh, Shelf. Shoe to my, sh true to my shelf. This is the True to Myself eyeshadow palette. Now I yesterday needed a very fast look because I had some errands to run. So I popped into this peach tone here 
and this beautiful shimmer shade over here. I thought this would be a very nice, easy look to do. And it was, but it just was very lackluster. I also felt like the matte eyeshadow had so much kickback. There was just so much powder fluffing everywhere. Um, the shimmer wasn't even that fantastic. It took quite a bit to layer it up, but I'm probably going to pop it on today with you. I'm probably going to turn off these lights because I just feel like it is definitely making this room look darker. How does lights make a room look darker? I don't know but I think it may be better if I turn these off. I mean, if we're turning stuff, I'm so sad. You get to go on this journey with me as I figure out this new beauty space. I hope you enjoy it, even if it's not totally like related to the makeup or the content I usually do. It's the true behind the scenes of creating a, you know, a YouTube channel and what it takes to put in the work behind the scenes that isn't on camera. So sometimes it's testing stuff. Next, I see something jelly. Oh, it's by Rimmel. It's a jelly blush. Do you like a jelly blush? It looks like it's a blush highlighter. Like, I guess either this could be a combo or there's also a highlighter going around. The one I got here is in the shade Peach Punch. It looks like it'd be a really pretty color. Um, this is something I am going to be gifting away because Rimmel is not cruelty free. What's something I do like, though, about this Chic Beauty box is that they do mix in high-end products with drugstore products. There are some amazing drugstore products you guys know I rave about and love so much. So I love that they have that in there. Um, it's just sometimes with drugstore things, a lot of those aren't cruelty free. So I have to be a little bit more picky, but I can give these away to friends. You guys in the future, you never know. Clarins SOS Primer. Clarins is also not cruelty free, I do believe, but this is the Lavender Primer. This is a $40 value according to the card. Clarins Paris is not cruelty free according to Cruelty Free Kitty is they may test on animals or their suppliers might through third parties. I thought that's what it was because I have received a Clarins product from this box before. So this is something that I'm happy to gift away because this is brand new $40 value. And I have honestly so many primers. This doesn't necessarily break my heart because I have so much to go through. This is Showstopper. This is a Revlon Bullet Lipstick. And this is something that I feel like, you know, the reds tend to go around in subscription boxes. The value on this is $9.49. I know some people really love Revlon. Again, great drugstore brand, but not cruelty free. So I'm going to be gifting this away. But I do see something in here I think I can use. A Fenty Beauty brush. I have never tried her brushes ever. Have I? I don't think so. This is her Precision Blending Brush. Ooh. So I got lots of brushes this month, apparently. Not mad about it, not mad about it, I gotta say. I'm off of my schedule of when I would normally do all of my things, and you don't realize until you move and change your entire life that you're like, oh, my life is in disarray in many ways because I don't have that normal routine. I'm still working on how to get my routine back. So having some fresh, clean brushes doesn't suck. I love that it came with this to pull off, and this is the blending brush here. This does feel like it's very soft. It's got long bristles. So this, like this paddle piece of the brush feels like it's got some wiggle room to play with. So this will be interesting. I'm curious how this will pick up shadows. And to give you a quick value on the Chic Beauty Box card of the products I received. Oh, the Rare Beauty True to Myself eyeshadow palette is 29 bucks. I don't know why I thought that would be pricier, but that's good to know. It's not crazy pricey. So maybe that'll make me a little less harsh on the formula. It's just not my favorite formula. There was a Charlotte Tilbury kissing lipstick that was in one of these boxes. Oh, I wish I would have gotten that instead of the Revlon personally. Fenty Precision Blending Brush is $22. The Revlon. Okay, so everything I received in this box has a value of $113.44. Not bad. And like I said, there are a lot of other things in the box. I'm kind of hoping something else comes back to me that I receive that I haven't gotten yet in the future because some of those look really cool and I'd love to try them. So now I am going to, I believe seeing what's in front of me, jump ahead. Um, I'm gonna change up my lighting a bit because I don't think I love this and I'm a little heartbroken about it because I just set everything up. Um, but what I think I will do is prep my face to get ready to start with the alley-oop that I got from BoxyCharm and then we're gonna go from there. Question. Is it wrong of me to pull out something that is not from either one of these subscription boxes to set my eyes? Because I'm going to do it anyway. I went to Sephora yesterday and picked up a few goodies. 
and I realized when I was going through the store I am super grateful to be getting a lot of things from BoxyCharm over time because I walked in there and was like oh my gosh I own so much of this store that I hadn't even realized it I guess until I was like looking for something new long story long I ended up picking up something I already have but in another shade that you guys told me you love because this is a product I love I got a mini version of the Fenty powder that I am obsessed with this is the pro filter instant retouch setting powder you know I don't shut up about but it's in the shade banana that is a shade that a lot of you guys told me you love because I have cashew so it's a little bit more of that deeper warmed up color so I love that but I have wanted something a little bit lighter for like under the eyes just thought I would share that with you and do this with you. oh my gosh it comes with a little puff stop it. it comes with a tiny puff for my tiny powder oh Lynn in a Barbie world I kind of want to see if the puff works, but I also don't want to mess up the makeup, but it's okay. I'm just going to be doing a little bit of powder under the eyes because I do have very expressive eyes, as we all know. Oh, golly. So I don't want to do my face much, just right under. And I don't know if this puff was the best way to go about it, but you know, I wanted to. Look how cute it is. This powder is also the powder I compare everything to that I love. All right, so now I got to do the alley-oop. See, because I'm not sure because everything else is still just some tinted moisturizer and Concealer and I just realized I'm gonna need some brushes for this. So thank goodness I just washed a bunch of my face brushes not eyeshadow brushes. So we're, we're winning halfway here. Oh And I had to fix my earrings today on vacation They apparently broke off and I was really concerned that because I can never find these on sale anymore um, one of the clips, one of the wire pieces that holds it together is the part that broke, not the actual earring itself. So today I had Amazon send me a earring kit that I'm probably going to be putting in an upcoming faves because it saved my earrings. These are my favorite summer earrings. So I was able to save them. So I had to wear them. Don't you love when I'm really chatty with you guys and I just keep going off on tangents? I'm not sure which brushes I'm going to want for what because I don't usually use creams. So I'm just kind of like stacking the deck over here to give myself every kind of brush I could possibly want to go about these creams and hopefully I can make this work. I'm a little anxious because I don't use creams. It is also the afternoon so I feel like the sun's in a different spot and I took off all the lighting. So it's still sunny out but I hope this is better. We shall see. Behind the scenes of YouTuber life, you didn't know you were getting a full crash course today, did ya? All right, so let's see here if I can open it, if I can remember how to open it. It's weird that this one flips up, whereas the rest of them slide to the side. That part is confusing my brain and I can't seem to compute. So the way I tend to start things with powders is I start with bronzers, then I go to blushes. Sometimes I touch back into a bronzer if I've done a little too much and to blend the um, blush with the bronzer to make it a little bit more natural. And then I usually go in with the highlight. But this is a different beast. Is this gonna work? I don't know. Um, I kind of feel like I need something with a little bit more density for a brush versus something loose that I would use for a powder. I feel like I need more density to move the product. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Let's just see. I'm going to take one of my Moda Pro angle brushes and I'm gonna go in here into the bronzer. Let's see how this does. Kind of really getting in here. Okay, we see it. Let me get it up further on the brush though, not just on the back. So, oh, this is gonna be so messy. I've played with cream contours enough, but this isn't a contour, to, to kind of know what I'm doing, but maybe I picked too flimsy of a brush. I don't know, we shall see. This is a lot, and it's a little low. <sighs> is this already a fail? I'm already failing myself. When you are a powder lover and you don't hardly use creams, Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't even have like a real foundation on. All I have on today are the like skin tints. That's all I've got on today with um, some concealer that I'm still trying to decide how I feel about it. How do you guys like the Item Beauty products? I'm still like, I'm okay with it. I'm just not maybe in love with it. Oh my God, where, what is this? Why is it down here? What am I doing with my life? Adam's gonna come home and be like, what did you do to yourself? And I'm just gonna say, I don't know, to be honest. I'm gonna take a sponge that has some of the makeup on it, my base makeup, just to like pull it up a little, blend it in a little. There are no rules in makeup on what tools you have to use. 
So you do you. Kind of wish I would have gone higher. Now I'm gonna lift it. Gonna lift it up. We're gonna we're gonna raise the we're raising the cheekbone. What I like to call putting back what God forgot to give me. I'm just gonna add that in. Do you think if I blend upward it helps? Sometimes yes. Let's hope. Let's hope it works with creams too. How do I contour my nose with a bronzer like this? Because normally I would do this, but we just saw what happened there and I'm not sure that was the best thing to do without being too much. Oh, it's like so much. I don't even think I can blame the lighting on that. I think that's me. Watch me struggle. Want to try the Fenty blending brush for the nose with the cream or should we just do that with eyeshadow. Let's do that with eyeshadow. I'm just gonna go in here. I'm kind of having to treat this as I would a cream contour because that's the only thing I have to compare it to at the moment. But I don't, haven't done that in so long. We have to trust the process. I'm trying to remind myself it's like when you're midway through makeup and you don't want anybody to see you anyway. But right now I'm not as confident because this isn't my medium. I don't know what I'm doing. I think we're not doing terrible. Let's pep ourselves up here. We can do this. We can do this. I'm gonna come here. I feel like I'm gonna have to wash these brushes immediately because I don't know what I'm doing with the cream yet. Oh, 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 what did I do? Oh, <sighs> she's a clown. I need another brush I do. Oh my golly, that is such a pigmented blush. Holy, and y'all know, I'm gonna tell you till I die, I'm not a blush girl, but there are certain blushes that I love and I will rave about. But it's like, this is the thing I was trying to avoid. Okay, 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 we can make this work. We can make anything work. We can make anything work. It just takes patience, a little bit of magic, maybe a chisel. Hard to say right now, hard to say. Okay, I'm a little scared to touch that one again on my nose at all because that kind of this has got really pigmented. It's not even like fully coated the brush. <laughs> and girl went ham. I'm a little scared of it. I'm a little, a little scared of it. Oh, I'm still gonna put it on my nose like an idiot. Okay, okay. I'm gonna have to wash all the things that are touching any of this product just to try to make it less stressful. Okay, do we have a rosiness to our cheeks now? Okay, okay. I go back into the bronzer like I normally would. Is this a problem? Is this a mistake? I don't know. I'm feeling shiny and today may not have been a day to try and use something else I've recently received that I you guys know I'm reviewing behind the scenes the let me glow illuminating serum from keys this is a primer that gives you that healthy glow but this is creams so I'm feeling extra shiny extra dewy and then I still have a highlighter to use oh joy 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 okay okay this isn't terrible I think we're doing okay, actually. Okay, I'm feeling a little bit more confident. Things are kind of meshing together, settling together, and we still have to powder, but I have to do the highlighter first before I can do the powder. Dang it, okay, we can do this. Picking something with longer bristles to be a little bit looser, to hopefully not be as densely packed. However, I'm not convinced this is picking anything up. Okay, I'm gonna make it pick something up. I'm literally sticking my finger in here, making it pick something up. Oh, I'm my own problem. You guys ever sit there and stare at yourselves and you're like, you know, you're the problem, right? The call is coming from inside the house. I'm the villain. I don't even know this is doing anything, honestly, because I already have so much dew on my face and I don't really see anything happening here. Maybe what I'll do here is literally use my finger. Although I have to say, I just put my finger in here. You just saw me do it. And it's like the color of my skin almost. Okay, I can see it a little bit there in the close up, but not in person as much. Like it just doesn't even show. Your girl does not see anything. So that's fine. Maybe it's gonna be a natural. Maybe this is how we get natural. This is how we get it all back. Okay. Let's powder down. Should I use the banana? Should I use my favorite? Because I still don't have much sun on this body, I think I am going to come back in here. Not that I got this in a box, but in case you're invested in knowing how this color works for me, we may as well find out. It's a little extra credit. Oh, that was too much. I am a problem today, and this is a tiny thing. I'm trying to make sure I set down all this cream too, simply because I don't know how to properly work with creams. 
So I don't want to like mess it up by not putting, setting it properly or enough. I'll be honest, I'm a little scared to use the bronzer like I would normally do it like under the chin, kind of all around because I feel like I'm still, you know, getting, getting used to this product. So I may use something else for the other parts of the body, but right now the face is, you know, all of that Ali U product. Okay, feeling good, not feeling sticky or anything. All right, so what do we think of the face? Do we see some bronzer? Do we see some blush? I don't know if I see highlighter, but I don't know if I need to because it is like illuminating. Okay, in person, it actually looks pretty smooth. I don't see really anything grabbing to my texture. I will say it seems a little smudgy right up here. And I don't know if that is from I mean, I guess it would have to be from something from the cream because it looks like a smudge, but it isn't, it's like pulled away right here. It's like makeup is pulled away in this spot. Not like angry about it. It's just, it's pretty, it's better than I thought it was going to be. Honestly, it's better than I thought it was going to be. So let's keep rolling. Let's do the eyes. So we've got the Rare Beauty palette in the True to Myself. And I learned in the last video with a palette very similar to this, I don't, like the centerpiece because it gets all over the face and i only swatched it on the arms and it got everywhere so that's going to need a glitter glue but i also have this to try today so we'll see what we see do they have any suggestions on how to use the beauty crop liquid eyeshadow duo on the one side is a creamy velvet pigmented matte formula and the other side is a dazzling liquid glitter formula. They are easy to blend and can be layered, mixed and matched, a double dose of fun, 18 bucks. Okay, take it out of the packaging. Hope this works well. Sometimes you get really excited because something works better than you anticipated to and you're like, yes. But when you've had some products that don't work so well, you get a little nervous to try stuff like this if you're like, oh, is this about to be a goopy mess? I don't know. Tell you what, the packaging is childproof. It will not let me in. And anything that's childproof is generally Nicole proof. So maybe what I'll do is just kind of use maybe this more natural color from the Rare Beauty just to kind of set something down in the crease, just so one, you can see me use it, but also I can tell you a little bit more about my thoughts with it because I've already tried this one day beforehand. I would have preferred to use maybe a different shade, but honestly, this color story is very similar to the last one. We're looking at a purple here. We got some pinks and maroons, um, some deeper tones. Well, you know what? This color story would go well with this. So maybe I will go in there with that. I just usually like to start my lid with a little something lighter. A little bit of this, and then I'll go in with the maroon shade before I go into the other goodness from the beauty crop. So I just find these, I'm glad they're only 29 bucks. I don't know if they're always 29 bucks, but this one is. I'm glad it's only 29 because in my head I was thinking this was a $45 palette and I just can't say that it's worth that much money. I really can't. I like me some Selena Gomez as much as the next millennial. I do. But um, this isn't maybe my favorite formula. It's not bad absolutely requires building, which can be really great if you're trying to create a nice look that isn't overwhelming, especially if maybe the colors that palette aren't your jam. I like that I can use just a few shades and get a lot of dimension. I will say that. I just don't think this is maybe my favorite formula based on how much fallout there is and there's still not a lot of pigmentation. I wanna be able to get my brush in there and I wanna be able to build something relatively quickly and I feel like with these it takes quite a bit. It's not bad though. Like this was only what three or four and you can definitely see it. I could see this being a really great brand for maybe newbies to make up whether no matter your age bracket because then you can figure out how much you want without worrying about adding too much or it looking not its best. So I could see that and maybe that's what they were going for. I love her marketing and her branding though. I think she does a great job of that. So I'm gonna take, this Fenty brush just has a lot of give at the end of it and I don't think this is gonna, I think this is gonna be better for a lid. So I'm just gonna go into one of the Eloise really, really pretty brushes that I've already received. And you've already seen me use these, but I'm gonna use the other side and go into this deeper maroon purple tone here just to kind of like get something going here. Let's see, how do I like this color? First dip actually got a lot of pigment. That's pretty good. 
I like these brushes a lot. I feel like they're super duper soft. They just very effortlessly spread the product, which I really appreciate. Even though this is not a color maybe I would normally gravitate to or would plan to wear on a daily basis, I will say this shade is actually performing much better than that lighter shade I started with that yesterday I feel like had so much fallout, kind of got everywhere on my desk and it also just was only so okay. Like it wasn't anything spectacular. This actually is doing a pretty good job. And now we're gonna pivot and see how this does because I have no clue. So I'm gonna start with the matte shade over here. Ooh, so we've got a paddle that's actually flat, which makes me happy because sometimes when they're a round doe foot, they're more difficult to apply to the eye. So sometimes if I work with a liquid, it'll really work well and not be patchy at all. And sometimes when you go to spread it with your finger or the brush, it can really pull product back and you have a lot of bald spots. Let's see how this, how this goes. Ooh, it's a really pretty rich color. I could see this being stunning in the fall. Let's see here. I just, I coated the lid, spread it with the finger. All right, it's feeling a little tacky. Um, just giving you a, an idea of what it feels like. It feels kind of like, I don't know, maybe it's something that's not supposed to be on your eye, but so I'm curious how this will dry. That's just first impressions, obviously. What a pretty color. Actually, that's really, really pretty and goes really well with the color I have down from the Rare Beauty palette. Not mad about those choices at all at this moment. This feels like a very fall look to me at the moment, but it totally does go with the <laughs> tank top I'm wearing. So I'm gonna let this sit for a second. I'm gonna come over here, but I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna use this Fenty Beauty brush because I feel like this is what it's intended for is to really put down something like this on a lid. And I wanna give you options, um, cause I know everybody likes to apply things differently. Just cause this, ooh. I like how this is going on better than using my finger and that's rare for me. I usually prefer a finger with specific types of product, but this just made it so much easier. I feel like it's already done. I didn't need to do nearly as much. It might be a little lighter. This is what the brush looks like. So I'm just gonna add just a touch more But I really like that. Oh wow, super blended. I don't see any patchiness. I don't see any bald spots. I am really pleasantly surprised with how well that went on. You always hope for the best, but sometimes you can't help but plan for the worst in case something goes wrong, especially when it's a first impressions. So I am really impressed with how well this played, played on the lid, how well it's gone down, both with the finger and with the brush. I don't see any skipping. I don't see any bald spots. Very impressed with that. And I also really love the color that I had added in from the Rare Beauty. That was, I don't know why I didn't think of that sooner, but that was a great choice to use for some matching to go up into the crease to really just make the look a little bit more. It's feeling a little tacky on both, even this one. So I'm not sure how long it would be tacky, but it has been able to sit down for just a little bit. So now I'm going to go over here. Let's see what we're working with. All right, also a flat doe foot, which will be good to add product. Because I think the brush did really well before and I think it's just gonna make it so much easier to control. Now I could be wrong, so let's find out. Does it dry that fast? And I could see you just using the matte side. I'm gonna say that right up front because I didn't know what this glitter shimmer side was going to do for this look. Was it going to help it? Was it not? I feel like it doesn't look bad, but I could see you just committing to the matte side if that's just what you want to do and just be one and done. I could totally see that. I'm trying to see how this dries because I can't tell. I think it looks pretty even actually. There is a little bit of sparkle to it. You can see the difference here between the matte side and the glitter side. It's already drying down. I can tell that it doesn't like feel crusty or crunchy or anything, but it definitely coats the eye. So it's a touch heavier, but it would be. I mean, I did just a layer on there, but I wanted to see, this is just now just a touch tacky. So it's not terrible and I don't think it's creasing. So if you were to just do the matte side, I think you'd be good. I think you'd be okay. This is actually impressing me. Honestly, this is impressing me. Didn't think I'd be going this route. When in Rome, let's just keep going with it. 
really glad I got this Fenty brush because even though they're from different boxes, this is working beautifully with this. And I'm being more generous with this side now that I've played with it a little bit to know what I'm working with. I have a better idea here. So let's just, I almost don't need this brush though. As you just saw, this all go down really easily. I'm mostly just kind of like setting it in place now. Kind of moving anything extra that I need to around. But I didn't even need to do much uh, with this, honestly. So I, I'm honestly getting more and more impressed as I'm working with this product, which I did not, I'll be honest, think that was gonna happen. Didn't think it was gonna happen. As it dries, like this side is really wet right now, this one is actually not feeling as heavy anymore. It's not feeling like it's too much and I don't think it looks bad. I'm gonna do obviously some cleanup in the crease. Obviously I've got some stuff going on the outside here. We're still getting there, but I'm not mad. I don't see it really skipping or jumping or pulling or showing any bald spots in a crease area. The beauty crop, I was not expecting this. Way to perform. What are the odds that the Rare Beauty palette is gonna be so close and matching? Maybe I'll come back over here into the lighter shade just to kind of complete the look a bit. I am impressed. So I'm gonna jump back into something else that I'm gonna be reviewing soon. So hit the subscribe bell, hang around for upcoming faves and fails because I got some more goodies that I have not tried that I am going to be trying right now, actually right now, but I'm gonna do it off camera. Make you come back, make you wanting more. Gotta keep you coming back and wanting more, you know? Okay, so I am, I got close to my face in a couple other different types of lighting and I'm not in love with what I am seeing on the face in particular. Now I still need to set it down with a setting spray, so I'm doing that real quick to see if that changes anything. Um, but I am, seeing a lot of the reasons I don't like cream makeup on my particular skin type. I have oily skin. It's kind of combo-y the older I get, but also um, I have large pores. Things tend to live in crevices if I'm not careful, which is why over the past few years I have been perfecting my favorite types of makeup that are smoothing, blurring, are very complementary types of makeup to my particular skin, you know? And that's what we're all doing, is trying to find out what works best for our skin. So I will give some pros and some cons to things that I am seeing, and then we can go from there. I obviously just did some setting spray, so you can see I'm, I'm trying to make this work. Give me just one second. So let me get really close to my face right now. I did warm up just like the neck and area that I kind of needed to warm up with just a normal powder bronzer that I love just to kind of do a little bit of blending. So turning on this, let's turn it to the magnifying side that's gonna be the truth teller. I am seeing, and maybe it's just cause my skin's been having some rough moments, but some of this is makeup. Like right in the nose area, right around here, there's a lot of like cream bunching. And maybe it's the cream not working well with the powder that I love. Now it is a powder that's new to, as far as color range, but not new to me as far as the formula goes. So I know it wasn't the powder as the problem. I'm specifically thinking it is going to be the Alley Oop Stack the Odds because of my skin type. Um, I'm actually still impressed though with how things look pretty smooth on my very bossy skin. I do have very large pores, specifically right up front. And the fact that I did put on probably too much because I didn't know what I was doing, I wasn't sure which brushes work best with this type of product. Some of this could be on me and I take ownership of that. Where I think it's more the product not meeting well with my skin is how it is evolving into certain areas where it just keeps crowding more and more makeup in the crevices around here. See it looking a little more cakey. That's kind of the word I guess I wanna go with right now. Right in these areas, kind of into this laugh line area too. It's not overt, it's not crazy. However, I just put this on 30 minutes ago. What will it look like later in the day? But in some areas though, it is really smooth. Like I said, the highlighter, I don't really notice, but you're seeing here, because I have the light on right here, you can see, although that's all my skin too. So, hmm, where is that highlighter? Where is that highlighter? I don't really see the highlighter. I just see my skin looking juiced up from potentially something I tried earlier, not knowing how this was gonna work out. And this just honestly, I don't see it. Like, let's do a swatch here. Let's do some swatching. 
I'm getting really in here. And I feel it being creamy on the hand, like on my finger and on the hand, but I don't, where's the highlight? Y'all know? Like, I mean, maybe this is supposed to be hella natural. And I do like how it's blurring on the hand. It's not really doing much as far as like detracting or bunching. This was super pigmented. I couldn't even go lightly into it without it being super pigmented. And it could be the color choice, but I had to go off the only the palettes that were available. I feel like it's it, it wears down though. Like you can work with it to make it less. And then as far as the bronzer goes, like it does have this very wet consistency compared to these other two. This one has a much more wet feel to it in the pan than either one of these do. And I mean, this definitely reminded me of any of the cream bronzers, uh, sorry, cream contours that I've tried in the past. And there's kind of a reason I don't go back to those just because I don't think they lay well on my skin and they don't wear as well on my skin. So I still don't really see the highlighter. These also can pack a lot of punch. Um, but also that being said, you guys saw how much bronzer I had on earlier. It was a little, little much, a little much, right? So I did what I could to diffuse it, but make it blend, make it merry. And while I think there is still some product there, obviously, I, I found myself staring at myself in another mirror in the house going, for the amount I had on, I kind of expected to be able to see more in person. And I feel like in the natural light, while I'm right up against it, it looks okay. But in my bathroom, I look a little flat. Like in other lighting in the house, I just kind of look like I'm missing something. So I very much wanted to grab one of my favorite powder bronzers and just kind of like, I just want to do a touch up. And you know, there's no rules with makeup. You could start this way and then do that. But as far as this being a standalone piece, maybe this is just supposed to be natural no matter how much you add to it because it definitely blended back out. And I was concerned because I added too much. I did, but I'm just, I don't know. I'm starting to see some cakiness up here now that I didn't see before. It started over here. It's what I was mentioning before that I thought maybe some makeup had pulled away. It's it's looking patchy. It's looking a little cakey. But again, if you like cream products, your skin may just be better for it. I really feel like my skin is the detractor, but I'm always going to keep trying it. It's like foods that I thought I didn't like, like maybe like five years ago, I was like, no, I don't like this. But now as an adult, you know, or like, you know, further along, I'm like, oh, let me try this again to see, do I still dislike it? Do I like it better now? Different styles. So I do the same thing with makeup, foods, makeup, everything. I still want to retry things to see how do I feel about it in the future. So I'm so glad that I did do this. I almost feel like I'm trying to think of other ways that I can make this work. Cause there's parts of my makeup that I'm like, oh, I do like that. But then there's other things that I'm like, what happened in this section and this section, you know, things like that. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to try this again. I usually try to do things more than once just to give it a go. So maybe I'll do a video upcoming of things that I need to retry. Would you like something like that? Whether it's a subscription makeup products box, but like things that I just need to retry. Now I'm going to go to the eyes specifically in regards to these two. Yesterday when I tried this with simply this shade and then this shade on my lids, it was a very easy look. It was fine, it was pretty, it just wasn't anything special and I kind of felt like the formula is just maybe not my favorite. However, today I feel like it did a little bit better of a job of redeeming itself for me. It really did a pretty decent job. Um, I feel like this was kind of my showstopper for the day and I was kind of not thinking that was gonna happen. But my lids right now do, they look nice. They really do. I'm not angry at how my eyes look at all. I do feel like even if I took a little bit more time to do a little bit more blending up here, whether it's with this or with this, I could play with it some more because this really impressed me. I think I'm gonna hang on to this for the fall time because this is a beautiful tone and shade. The color of the matte shade really impressed me. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this because to me, this is like one of my favorite lip color looks. And I guess I just hadn't thought to put something like this on my eyes, but it's really beautiful. And I will say, I kind of thought it would lean more into that maroon type when I was going into the glitter side, the shimmery side. However, once we got into it, we I feel like it's way more fire engine burnt orange tones than that. So I feel like it, it kind of 
maybe stumped me for a quick second to figure out what to do with it. And then I ended up just putting it all over the lids, but I did still have some of the matte tones and the Rare Beauty palette kind of come through with the crease. So I feel like now that I know a little bit more, I could even perfect the look to look even a little bit better because some parts of the crease, I'm like, oh, is that a bald spot? Is that an evolving bald spot? I need to give it some more time to figure out which is working, maybe which is pulling away, or was it maybe an application issue with me? I don't know. I don't know. But I want I want more opportunities to play with it. And that's a good feeling to have. Because like with the Alley Oop, I'm like, do I want to do this again? Because what if it just makes me look crunchy and cakey all day? But the eye look, I feel like I could play with. I could perfect it a little bit more to learn what I like, what I don't. But really impressed me and I didn't think it would. The Eloise brushes really love. I have used these now a couple different times. I'm so glad to have another set. Not mad about it. Also not mad to have some really nice skincare to add to my collection but nothing that's going to be fun or sexy to watch in a video like this so stay tuned for updates. All right the status O, which is also out of the office that so many of you guys told me about because for some reason it wasn't dawning on me. Thank you. I'm going to look here really quick to see do I prefer my PR box or my paid for box. And oh, I had that phase zero makeup eyeshadow palette in the last one. Definitely go check that out because there's more eyeshadow palettes to discover. You know, I think these are both pretty much the same for me. I feel like they're both middle of the road. Um, the other things that were in my PR box were a lash enhancer, which honestly I've not been using a lot of and I haven't even opened that one up yet. And then there was the beauty for certain whole lot of mascara and I thought that was overvalued. You know, I think they're about even honestly. They're not like one's not better than the other. I'm glad to have gotten $32 vitamin C eye brightening cream in my paid for. It feels like the two comparable things that were, were the different like they're supposed to be the standout product was either the alley oop or the phase zero shadows and spoiler alert go watch the last video um i thought this was okay but this wasn't like what i was hoping it was gonna be same with this so that's why i feel like these are even these are even a little bit here so i'm still gonna play with them both i think i'm still gonna give them another whirl but nothing is making me go oh my god yes so it's kind of even Thank you guys so much for watching and going through this boxy charm, chic beauty box, lighting beauty room setup trials with me. I love talking to you guys so much about makeup, but also kind of like the evolution of my channel here. And in an upcoming video, I am going to be showing you what I got on Amazon Prime Day to go into this beauty space along with some other amazing things that I have been purchasing, trying behind the scenes. Bye friends. Ha <laughs> ha